Comfy UI has native support for WAN VASE, which provides both 1.3B models for low VRAM cards and 14B models for those with a bit more. And yes, GGUFs are available too. Being native Comfy UI, head on over to the Workflow menu and then click on Browse Templates. Select Video and you should see these new WAN VASE templates at the top. There's five of them there. Text to video, image to video, control video, out painting, and first frame, last frame. What's that? You don't see the templates? I bet you're trying to use new features in an old version of Comfy UI, aren't you? Here in Comfy UI Manager, you can see the version I'm using. If yours is older, click that Update Comfy UI button. Anyway, now that you've updated and you can see the templates, let's dive into the first one there, text to video. When you open the workflow, you will be asked which models you want to download. For lower VRAM cards, the 1.3B model is ideal, meaning you can ignore that larger 32 gig download. You will, of course, need the other files. If instead you've got at least 24 gig of VRAM, then don't worry. Even with a 32 gig file size, it does still seem to run happily. So snag that one as well. GGUF files of various sizes are also available, but you will need a custom loader for those. You'll also need to download them yourself into your ComfyUI models UNet directory. With the files downloaded, load up whichever one it was you picked. Here, I'm going with that huge 14B file because why not? It even says load models here at the top in case you're not sure. There is also a load LoRa here as well, and this one is rather special because it's a bit like the Hyper or Turbo LoRa's, only for WAN 2.1 instead. Rather than the usual 20 steps, this means we can now get away with as little as two steps. Still not as fast as LTXV from last week's video, but a welcome speed boost nonetheless. Underneath the K sampler, you will find a link to some information about CauseVid, and this is where things get a bit interesting. Well, interesting for a nerd like me, at least. You see, the 1.3 and the 14B CauseVid files appear to have very different licenses. For 1.3, it was derived from this model, which is Creative Commons by Attribution Non-Commercial. However, for the 14B, it's from a very different version, which is Apache 2 licensed. Just something to be aware of, I guess. Back to the workflow again then, and being text to video, the main thing you need to do is enter some text, your prompt for the video you wish to create. As you can see from my example, I like both cheese and cartoon style animations and have managed to craft an elegant prompt to that end. Moving along, we have the WAN Vase to Video node, which will take care of things like width, height, and the number of frames or the length of your video. The note beneath has a little guide for the resolutions with 14B being able to handle both 480 and 720p. And in this case, I've gone for the full 1280 by 720, the 720p option. The note for the K sampler provides some good starting points for with and without the CauseVid LoRa, with 20 steps normally versus the between two and four steps with the LoRa. This is very much needed, as in my additional note over here, you can see that even with four steps, that takes six minutes on a 3090. Do feel free to disable the LoRa and run the full 20 steps if you've got the time. I don't, so let's take a look at the result. Here she is then getting ready to snag some cheese from the fridge. She opens it up, she picks up the cheese. Oh yeah, delicious. Not bad at all. Being all native nodes, you might not have seen these ones before, the create video and save video. And of course I've moved this down and obviously made it a bit bigger because without making it a bit bigger, um, you can't see the entire video. Then once you've made the video fit nicely so you can see things like the bar at the bottom and the play and the time and you want to re- oh it won't it won't go any smaller and in fact it does end up getting bigger and bigger and bigger hopefully something they will fix in the future. Time for something a bit more realistic and what could possibly be more cliche than a dancing woman. This time I've also changed the width and the height around because, well, I'm interested in seeing what the times are like. And this time with four steps and 480 by 864, we're down to just two minutes. 
The result of that isn't too bad. It gives us a dancing woman. There she is, dancing without any shoes on. I guess I need to prompt for shoes, but there's something a bit funny going on at the beginning there, isn't there? If I go back to the first frame, and yes, it was on the first video as well. Um, if I zoom in, it should be even more obvious. There are all these sort of little blocks everywhere, which looks a bit weird. And then a couple of frames on, it's even more obvious as well. Hmm, okay, so the rest of the video looks okay, so you could cut those out, or you can play with the settings instead. Um, here I've changed the sampler name to DDIM, and I'm using the scheduler DDIM uniform. I've also dropped the strength of the LoRa. Normally it's at 0.7, so here I've dropped it down to 0.5. I've also increased the number of steps to six, and interestingly enough, it does seven when I look at the output, but I don't know. Anyway, so seven out of seven, this one takes five minutes, but now when we look at the first frame of the video, yeah, it hasn't got any of those little blocks. So if we play this, and it hasn't got any of the flickering either. So it takes a little bit longer because you've got six steps, but you don't get those funny issues at the beginning. And just to make sure I'm not dreaming about those settings, here it is at 720 by 1280. This one, of course, taking a lot longer, 10 minutes and 41 seconds. A much bigger video this time. And yes, no blocks on the first frame. If we play it through, oh yeah, that's, oh, that's a good dance, isn't it? That is some good dancing. Not so sure about the rodents in the background. They're not as cute as the other ones, but yeah, that's, that's a much better quality video. On now to the next workflow, which is image to video. Much the same thing going on here, apart from this time, you're also providing a reference image. There's a little note here, which says Vase does not use data with style reference for training. Currently, it only has the functions of object or background reference. Therefore, at load reference image, you should upload an image with a solid colored background or a background image. At present, the WAN Vase to Video node only supports the input of a single reference image image. Okay, fair enough. So what I've done here is I've added a remove background node. So instead of that one going in, I'm sending this one. Of course, there are plenty of options for removing backgrounds, so do feel free to install your choice of node. For the prompt, I'm hoping for a perfectly normal fish with a moustache who then finds a top hat with cane and starts dancing on a stage. Not being keen on blocks, I went with the six step configuration again, meaning the first frame of the video. Oh, hang on. No, that isn't right. OK, so it hasn't got any blocks, but it's still looking like that. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Let's play the video and see. OK, so as usual, it sorts itself out and I Get my fish with a top hat and cane dancing on stage. Pretty good video. Very impressed by that. Not so impressed by the first frame. What's going on? Did my trick not work? Well, in this case, it's actually more down to the strength in the WAN Vase to Video node. This time I've changed the strength to 0.67. And as you can see, the first frame is much better. We can play the rest of the video and there he is and he gets his top hat and cane and starts dancing around again anyway. So changing the strength has made that first frame a little bit better. And how about if you put the strength all the way up to one? Well, the first frame once again looks very good and of course very close to the first image and then we play the rest of the video and he still gets his top hat and he still gets his cane, but it doesn't do that zooming thing. Now, that may be something that you're looking for, or perhaps it isn't. But uh, if you want more of that motion and stuff, then you can turn the strength down. But of course, if you turn it down too far, then you may get that slightly dodgy first frame. Template number three now, which is one of my favorites, WAN Vase Control Video. Like before, there is an input image, but now also an input video as well. Yes, I got totally fed up with the inability of the native node to resize when dragged and replaced it with a somewhat more common video helper suite node. This is also very useful because not only can you crop and resize the video, but you've got a frame load cap as well. The video gets pre-processed using Canny in this example, but you can use a number of other pre-processors. 
and the canny output goes in as the control video. I've used the six step configuration once again, and as you can see from the final video, I think that's very good indeed. It's taken her face nicely and the motions from the video. The fourth template is for outpainting. This one has a video input without an image, which you can add some padding to all the way around in this case. They have a little note which says you can manually calculate the width, but ain't nobody got time for that, so I'm taking their suggestion and using a custom node instead to do the resizing for me. You get a preview of the original and padded frames, plus this time I'm back to the default four step settings. Double checking the first frame, that seems okay, not too blocky, and if we play the rest of the video you can see where it's added all the way around. Not bad, not bad. Now there's also something else going on here too, because the input video is actually only three seconds long. So not only is this out painting, but it's extending the video as well. The fifth template is for first and last frame. No video input this time, as instead we've got two images, one for the first and one for the last frame. Just for giggles, I've even picked two images with different aspect ratios. No problem though, as the video size to the left is set to 512 by 512. And as you can see from these image previews here, we've got our little rodent, loads of blank stuff, and then the little rodent at the end. I'm prompting for the rodent mage to cast a spell and become super rodent. And this time I'm also going for the default four step setting once again. Having a look at the final video generation and the first frame, not too blocky. So let's have a look, see how he goes. He's casting his spell. Oh, and there he's transformed into super rodent. That's, that's not a bad transformation at all, actually. Very nice, very nice. To finish up with, here is a quick look at those GGUF models. As explained earlier, all you need to do is use the custom GGUF loader like I've got there. And I'm using the Vase 14B Q5KS. Everything else is like the default from the first example. And you'll see from my note, the rendering speed in this case wasn't as bad as it usually is with GGUF files, actually coming in at around the same speed for a change. And if we have a look at the resulting video, of course, with the defaults, you get the little blocks there, but let's, let's go through anyway. There we go, into the fridge, grab some cheese, which still exists in there. And there we go, very nice. So that's the GGUF model. If you're up for loads of non-native nodes, then I suggest you also check out Kijai's WAN Video Wrapper. There's loads of extra features in here, such as Block Swap, which is another way for lower VRAM cards to run these larger models. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.